Doug, you have a question, right? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry, it's me again. And uh, Representative Ward, you did bring it up, you know. Um, we had um, in the first time, and actually a lot of people's lifetimes, a, a year without tourists. And there was good and bad to it. It was an economic hit. But boy, the quality of life for a lot of people went up. The fish came back, the roads were clear, the beaches, you could actually go and take your you know, family and enjoy it. How much tourism, and, and I'm asking um, Representative Ward because you brought it up, but it's open to the other legislators too. Is, are we going back to tourism as usual with all those tourists or, or what? What is your view? How much tourism do we actually need? Uh, Doug, you, you are almost prognosticating what probably is going to come up in 2022, but I didn't mention because there's a growing macro nimbyism like, hey, let's cut the tourists out. My point is, let's do it after we get back into the mainstream where these 15,000 or so people are employed. I agree with you. We've, we've got to, they say, we got to manage tourism. My district has Hanama Bay. We're doing a great job, but you got to get, you got to get a reservation and then you got to pay about 10 bucks to get in. Those are messages to every district in the state of Hawaii to manage tourism and not make it where these massive uh, beer rather than champagne budget people are coming here. And to do it, we've got to plan it out well. But that means we've got to start thinking economically. So far, Doug, all we've done is lived off of our good looks. We've got to start using our brain. We haven't done that. And now we've got to do it because there's all, you know, once we start bad mouthing and fighting with tourists, it's going to really spoil the goose that glazed the golden egg. And to me, doing the HTA now is throwing out the baby with the bath until we get people back employed. Let's not do it economically. We're already weak. But your point is, we don't want a lot of tourists. And that is a momentum that's going to go into 2022. And you're going to see legislation just by what you just spoke. Otherwise, it's what Senator Chang said. Yeah. So, Doug, so, um, you know, one of the things, so I, I think Rep Ward is um, saying some stuff correct, but, uh, you know, he's kind of contradicting himself. The reason why Hanaoma Bay really work is to restrict the number of people going there and charging them. 862, which, um, you know, people talked about, does exactly that. Do you know how many tourists we had in 2019? 10 million. We have consistently said we do not want 10 million people. And on a daily count, we had between 30 and 40,000 tourists coming in. Guess how many people we have now? 30,000 tourists. And that's without the Asian tourists, the big spenders, like from um, Japan, China. Regardless of what's been going on, people are coming. So because we have 30,000 people coming on our shores on a daily basis now, it is, you know, I mean, if you try to go to a restaurant, it's packed, you know, like macaroni grill before I can just go in, you know, five minutes before and get a seat. I had to wait an hour and it's not even worth it at Ala Moana. So, so the whole idea was why do we continue to tax our residents? Why not tax tourists. And when you go to San Francisco, when you look at your bill, when you go to San Francisco, you have the state um, state hotel fee, and then you have the county hotel fee. And then so that's the entire mentality of the TAT tax in giving the TAT authority to the counties. So in a way, we are trying to where HT ha has failed in the past, um, we are trying to fill that void by attracting the quote unquote the right kind of tourists, which means if they're gonna come, why not we why not we increase the hotel tax? Why not we increase the rental car tax, which we just did as well, and then use that money to take care of our natural resources like parks, you know, the parks somewhere are just overrun. I can both the representatives of Waikiki are on this call, uh, Senator Moriwaki and Representative Tam. And I think they can envision a Waikiki, which, you know, could cater to tourists, but the right type of tourists, but at the same time, be mindful of our rat, uh, natural resources, our parks, our um, 
the fact that they're using our infrastructure, you know, it is an opportunity to shift that tax burden from our local residents to tourists. So, you know, I mean, for me, I love 862 because, you know, it's it's time before you, we cannot wait until tourism and everything ramps up and then figure out what to do after. We have to ramp up when it's at the low peak, just like what we did to Hyena. When Hyena was closed off completely, from tourists, local residents, because of the mudslide, they took that time to do manage, um, manage access. I think that's what we need to do for the entire state um, because you know the, the airlines are not gonna hold back. The airlines are making money off of adding seats. So you know we have to get more Akamai. We have to figure out how do we take benefits from the tourists and relieve burden from our um, local residents. And I saw that both Della and Adrian had their hands up. So I'm going to punt it over to Della and then Adrian. Thank you. I just want to build off of what um, uh, Chair Luke said. In addition to House Bill 862, we passed a number of bills that have provided the Department of Land and Natural Resources with the tools to do dynamic pricing like they do at Hanama Bay. So the legislature has already been doing the uh, and in, instituting destina destination management tools that the um, state can use. And so in some ways, we already are implementing and doing the work of HTA. And so I think the modifications that we've applied to HTA make a lot of sense in uh, HB 862. I'll throw it now over to eight, uh, Representative Tam, because again, as the representative of Waikiki, he has a lots, of, lots of insights into this area. Representative Tam? Thank you, Representative Bilotti and Chair Luke. Um, yes, and I voted for HB um, 862 for those reasons too. So one of the things that I've noticed about H, um, this year was that we put $3.1 million to beach restoration in Waikiki. And you look at who uses those beaches and you know who pays for it. It's primarily the taxpayers that pay for it. And um, the tourists are benefiting from that beach the most. And when we talk about diversifying our economy, we're not talking about eliminating tourism completely. Tourism is always going to stay and it's always going to be there. But I always like, I always like to describe our economy as a three-legged bar stool. We have tourism, construction, and military. And when one of those um, legs kind of falls, it no longer becomes a bar stool, it can no longer hold a person. So we kind of need to build another economy to make it a four-legged bar stool to complement the other three. So that when one of them does fall, like we saw in this pandemic, <clears throat> it still can hold up an individual such as our economy. So that's kind of my insights on the bill. Um, I think that we have to move in this direction to truly diversify. And I don't want to just wait until tourism ramp up, ramps up again to take this conversation again, because what I know is that uh, we're going to forget about diversifying our economy if we were to just wait for tourism to come back and then um, talk about it. Lisa, I'm afraid I spoke a little bit controversial and I've got a bit of pushback and I would only respond by saying this, when those who are unemployed and those who are barely making a living, I will totally agree with you back after they get back to work. Otherwise, I think we're just being a little bit precipitous. We got a macro political nimbyism going on that we don't want tourists, but we gotta watch out for our families is the first issue and that's getting them back into the visitor industry. Did you know now that the the uh, Airbnb people have got more people in their rooms than they have hotel people in the hotels now? There's a lot of this stuff that's going to come back and bite us. But what we've got to do is get those people back into the into their jobs so they can survive. Yes, um, I have I have a comment on on um, the tourism uh, industry. It is it is our mainstay as, as Representative Tam said, and for my district especially. Uh, but the, what, what HTA has not done, and I think what H62 is, is getting them to, to that point, is to use their funds for their pillars uh, in terms of managing tourism and managing meaning not just the number of people come to, to the islands, but really managing the experience that they have so that actually it's a safe place to be. It is, and crime is down, it, that we do respect our culture, our environment. And that has not been um, the focus of the experience. So we have the hyena problem, we've got the HANA problem. Um, 
so that we aren't really using our funds to make the destination experience uh, quality. And so, you know, we charge for it because we haven't had the resources to care for our environment. So you see the degradation of our environment, um, the, um, the residents feeling that there's, there's a real conflict with what, uh, what they can use as, as uh, Representative Luke said, you know, we've got to be able to, to balance and, and that's what we're expecting with H62 to, to send a message also to HTA that they have more than just bringing in tourists and branding and, and, and advertising. And, and I hope um, that that message is clear to the board and to the, um, the staff of HTA. I think the, the message is very clear, Senator. And I think the governor vetoing the bill is also a message to the legislature that there are other ma macroeconomics that are in play in addition to what otherwise is a growing macro uh, nimbyism in the state. Anyways, Lisa, sorry I mentioned something so controversial, but that's the role of the minority. That's what checks and balances are in the whole democratic process. Well, if we wanted to talk about controversy, we could talk about rail. <laughs> <laughs> I only would say that with humor, as yeah. Representative yeah. Luke. That's going to come and bite us next session. Though, mark my word on that. That was not a funny uh, uh, joke when I said they've got nowhere to turn except to us in 2022. Three billion bucks in the hole. Anyway, Lisa, back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 